What's up, crypto gang? Welcome back to another episode. If you guys are new here, we do a giveaway at the beginning of every single episode. And today's winner is Hunter Upload. Thanks so much for liking and commenting on the previous video, Hunter. I just sent you some crypto. Now that we covered some of the basics of what a master node is, what blockchains are associated with those nodes, now we can kind of dive into the meat of the series. First, I wanted to give a shout out to Crypto Movement. Thanks so much for sending me this awesome sweatshirt, guys. I love supporting any business in the space that's really trying to support creators. So diving into the Masternode community, first and foremost, the community has been overwhelmingly great about this series. I've had more DMs in the past week from Masternode developers than I have in probably my whole experience on YouTube so far. All the different projects and all the different developers, everyone unanimously has been very kind and warming to this project. This first episode is about how to set up a node on the Jin platform. That node specifically is CryptoFlow. I've been in contact with the guys over CryptoFlow. They hooked me up with one master node to show the progress over the course of this series. So I went through the process of setting that up on Jin and I wanted to showcase how it works. Before we get into that, I wanted to go through some quick resources. It's important to get your bearings when you're coming into a new space, especially something like master nodes, where first you need to understand what they are and where you can find out more about each of the projects. The primary resources in the Masternode community that I have found and I am in communications with has been Masternodes Online, which is what I mentioned in the previous video, Masternode Buzz, which is the pretty much all-encompassing press and news, and then you have the forum between blocks. That's where I did the announcement for this series on Masternodes and where I saw the most response from Masternode developers. So now that you know what a Masternode is, what the blockchains are associated with those Masternodes, and you know where you can find out more about the individual projects to pursue that have masternodes, we can dive into setting up a masternode on the Jin platform that's hosted by them, the first project that I'm gonna be going through, which is CryptoFlow. So let's dive right into it. As you can see, to set up the transaction, you need to go into the debug console window on the core wallet that you've downloaded. So for example, I am doing it with CryptoFlow right now. Uh, they require 100,000 CryptoFlow coins to be in the core wallet. You go into the debug console, console and enter in a get new wallet address as the command. And this is considered the collateral address that your wallet presents you with. Uh, from there, you can click uh, continue and it will show you that on the transactions tab in your wallet, you find the transaction titled payment to yourself and double click it. Uh, once the transaction ID in the details window, you enter it in here and it will pull uh, into Jin. And this is kind of the, the most important step is showing I sent my coins to the uh, address provided, the collateral address, and proving to Jin, and then they will pull in and host the node on the platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now that I have gone through, I created the collateral address, I just sent 100,000 crypto flow to the collateral address generated from the core wallet, and I'm putting in my transaction ID into Jin, pressing continue, and it is processing uh, and installing the node on the platform. So really straightforward process, but the most important components here are opening up the debug console window, entering in get new address, and that will present you with the collateral address, send your coins to yourself, uh, essentially, on your wallet and it'll say payment to self. You double click that, it will show you the transaction ID and then you need to prove to Jin that you have completed this transaction. And Jin's platform will go through and it will say, all right, this is actually a legitimate transaction to create the node, this is the right amount of coins and uh, that's when you can host it on Jin. So very easy, seamless process uh, but the most important part is just making sure that the core wallet is sending to yourself and that it is uh, the right 
transaction ID that you're inputting into Jin. In platforms like this, in hosting platforms, what you need is you need to have uh, just enough to cover fees to start. So they want to make sure that you're going to be paying your fees and everything. So just putting $10, $15, uh, enough to cover a month or two months. Uh, this is how the platform stays uh, in business is they take little pieces of transactions. You can pay a monthly fee or a daily fee. It's just sort of taking a little bit off the top uh, to host everything. So in order to get started, you need to have the currency of that platform on the platform before you do all of this. So that's kind of a, a big upfront uh, disclaimer that you should go through and just send out, you know, $10 to the platform that you're using uh, because that's kind of like the grease in the wheels, if you will, where if you don't have that, you can't do any of this. So do that first. And uh, once you have synced one confirmation to their blockchain, it will pull in the required information that you need. So it does take a little bit of time. As you can see here from the loading screen, uh, it just says that it's syncing to the CryptoFlow blockchain as well as uh, the Jin platform. Once you've inputted the transaction ID after making the payments to yourself for the in the collateral wallet, what we have here is we have uh, the final stage. And the stage is that they verified that you've inputted your coins uh, enough for a masternode. You've activated the masternode on Jin. And what you're supposed to do now, go into the master file, master node configure file, which can get a little technical, uh, but the easiest way is through tools, open master node config fire file on the wallet of the coin that you are using. For uh, crypto flow here, what we have is we have the ability to either do that or dive into the wallet data directory. So what I had to do, I'm on a Mac, is I had to go in through the data directory and actually find the file uh, for the masternode configuration. And input number two here, uh, a new row that is the uh, masternode kind of configuration all in one row. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna boot up the CryptoFlow wallet and it's been 30 seconds. So once it is booted and synced with the network, I will go through and it actually shifted from a syncing with blockchain as you saw before, and now the status update is waiting to start. So once the wallet boots up and the blockchain is synced, so we have the files matching together since I took this file and inputted it into the masternode configuration file. So they're talking to each other. Uh, once the CryptoFlow wallet is booted back up, uh, they're gonna be communicating together, which is what you want. We are almost uh, almost synced here, 62%. Uh, I'm, I always like to make sure that core wallets are always synced up completely before I do anything. Uh, that's the same way with you know AC3 and a bunch of other core wallets. I always try to make sure that everything is synced before taking any action. For projects like CryptoFlow and other really good ones um, like this that are in the kind of early stages, about 500 master nodes or so on the network, it's pretty, pretty streamlined and pretty easy to get all this up and running uh, as far as wait times go. So we are synced to the network now on, uh, on the CryptoFlow network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click continue. So after you have synced your wallet completely, you have to open up the debug console and open up the final command here, which is a uh, effectively saying start the node. Uh, they're talking to each other. The files are matched with Jin platform and CryptoFlow wallet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop open the debug console here. I'm gonna paste this and I'm gonna run that command and it is successful. Uh, so the node is now live um, on the core wallet and done. So what it's doing right now is it is going through and verifying that it can speak to the node uh, completely. And what Jin does, if I haven't clarified that, is they are hosting with the node that you have configured on your core wallet. So it's like 
the kind of iceberg, if you will, where the, the core wall is just sort of the top. And then Jin is going to manage everything that goes on uh, in the background here, like the bottom of the iceberg, the main meat of everything. So it was successful, as you can see here. Uh, my details and everything up front, the IP uh, and the uh, status is enabled and we are up and running. It gives me a reward address here that is going to send rewards to uh, my wallet synced with the CryptoFlow blockchain and we are all set. We are up and running here. So that is the complete setup through opening up a debug, um, the debug console, entering in, getting your collateral wallet address, sending 100,000 crypto flow coins to that collateral wallet address to verify that uh, you have enough coins to lock in a masternode and entering that transaction ID onto Jin's platform. Once that transaction ID has been identified, they give you uh, a configured little file snippet that you need to enter in to your core wallet. Once you enter in that configuration uh, line of code at the very bottom of the masternode config file, you are speaking to the Jin platform. From there, when those two are speaking to each other, you are uh, effectively running the last command on the debug window, which means that you are jumpstarting your um, your node, uh, your master node. So the the concept of saving that file and exiting out of the, the core wallet in the wallet. So once you've saved the file and exited out, that's probably where most people are going to mess up. Um, and that's probably one of the most important steps is once you save that file on your core wallet, you need to make sure to fully exit out of your wallet. That's a mistake I've seen people make. Uh, I get comments about that a lot actually, is you need to make sure to exit out of your core wallet once you have saved the masternode config file. That's it for the shortest version of how to deploy a masternode on the Jin platform. I tried to make it as simple as possible. There is a little bit of a technical piece, especially if you have to actually get into the folders on your computer. I talked to the Jin platform and also their support team and their support team is extremely responsive. So if you are in a bind when it comes up to setting up a node like CryptoFlow, you can contact them directly and they can kind of tell you what you need to do. I always recommend doing everything on your own and figuring out from your own failures because that's ultimately how I learn new things and I always recommend learning by failure. First episode here has gone through the different types of places that you can do research on projects. You have your masternodes online, you have your masternodes buzz, and you have your between blocks forum. On the other side, you have the Jin platform where it is hosting, whether it is a dedicated server or it is on the cloud where you can host masternodes. And then we went through how to set up the CryptoFlow masternode. Now that we have the foundation of masternodes and where to do research, we can start adding different projects. So what I've done is I've reached out to a few dozen different projects. I've had about 50 projects apply to be in this series. So over the next few months, I'm going to be diving into what it looks like to be setting up these individual nodes. Having so many projects apply and being new to masternodes in general myself, I had to turn to a lot of developers and I wanted to shout out Crypto Sandwich. He's been a lot of help. He's really involved in the masternode communities and introducing me to a lot of different people. There's been a handful of developers that have reached out and kindly introduced me to projects that they found legitimate, ones that they didn't even have anything to do with. It says a lot about the community behind masternodes, the idea that they want the passive crypto income to be widely known and they don't want it to seem like a scammy kind of concept like a BitConnect. It's so much fun finding communities and talking to the leaders of those communities and learning more about them. Because you can find pockets like this in these industries like cryptocurrency. These people have been developing these products for years on end now and it is starting to go a little mainstream because people are making it easy to get access to masternodes. But once you apply simplicity and user experience to something complex like masternodes, nodes, you have this winning combination of mainstream adoption. So getting in on the ground floor, talking to a lot of these developers that are brilliant and they're introducing me to all these different projects that are legitimate, it really makes me confident in the masternode space. Another reason I'm super stoked to be doing this series. So if you guys like this first episode, slap a like. If you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for new series and I'll see you on the next episode of Hack Crypto.